Hello and welcome everyone. Today I'm joined by the brilliant Yosef Gabriel. As most of you will know, Yosef is a writer, a political commentator on Ethiopian affairs, on Eritrean affairs, and generally on the Horn of Africa. Um, he has been writing a lot about uh, developments in Ethiopia for the past couple of years. And uh, today he has joined me to shed some light into what is happening in the Amhara region in terms of the conflict between the Fanum paramilitary group and the Ethiopian regime. And um, time permitting, we're going to also touch on other aspects in terms of Tigray and Eritrea. So thank you so much, Yusuf, for, for joining me today. Uh, thank you, Zaglai, for inviting me. And uh, thanks also for our uh, listeners. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It's my, it's my pleasure, as always, uh, Yosef. So, um, as I said, we, we're going to start with you giving us some insight into what you think is happening in the Amhara region, who I think a lot of people would want to know the dynamic of the fighting, who the players are. It's never clear, like, who are the outside forces, who are the warring parties, what are their um, end goals. There's a lot of aspects that is quite kind of blurred, and a lot of people would benefit from some sort of um, shedding light that you you, you could um, do in that respect, uh, Yosef. So give us a brief overview of what you think is happening in the in the region. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, there are two ways we could approach it. Uh, uh, one way is by looking at the alliances. Uh, uh, you know, there are uh, two distinct alliances right now. Uh, the Amhara region uh, and the Eritrea on one on the one hand, and on the other hand there is uh, 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 the Amhara. Uh, the, I mean the uh, the Ethiopian government, huh? uh, practically with all the killers, uh supporting it uh, at this point at this point in time. Uh, but I think it would be well, it would give us a better insight if you look at it from. Uh, what causes it? What causes it? And we could see the realignment that is uh, shaping now uh, in that region by looking at the causes of this war, uh, of what's happening in Amhara region right now. Uh, one of the main, uh, uh, well, there are two, uh, uh, two or three uh, uh, causes that are often mentioned. One is uh, the Pretoria Agreement. Huh? Uh, the, the other one is uh, the federal arrangement, the Amharas, for example, want the end of the federal arrangement or not, if that is uh, part of the cause. And the third one, uh, it could be a bit far-fetched, uh, but the, the, the rivalry between the Amharas and the Oromos. Huh? These are the three, in general, the three ones that are mentioned. That doesn't mean there is no legitimate reason at the, uh, at the bottom. Uh, when, we, when we look at the uh, Amhara population as the farmers, for example, then they could have legitimate reasons for what they are doing. Uh, things like, for example, the lack of fertilizer, which is very, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, if they don't get it, uh, it means that uh, uh, almost st at a starvation level, they will be living at a starvation level of probably next year, you know, because it's the second year that they are farming without fertilizer. So they do have legitimate reasons at the bottom. But what matters to me is uh, the Amhara elite and, uh, of course, the Fanos. Huh? So uh, I would say there are about three or four. Uh, 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 if you look, for example, at the Pretoria Agreement, huh? for Eritrea, it's obvious. Uh, it's uh, the primary reason why Eritrea is involved in helping the Amhara Fanos right now. And it is helping them even now. Uh, for example, the latest uh, news that I have heard was from Riot huh? that about more than 88,000 uh, uh, newly trained Amhara Farnos have crossed uh, uh, the, uh, the Western Tigray. You know? uh, even though uh, at this point in time, uh, the federal government believes that it has taken total control of the Western Tigray, it couldn't completely control it. This, the, 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 the Eritrean uh, government still manages to uh, to transport uh, arms and uh, uh, newly trained funders through Western Tigray. So what we are looking at is why is Eritrea doing this? Uh, the Pretoria Agreement for Eritrea is, uh, uh, in terms of, uh, to use uh, Ithias's term, Tukhalifna. Tukhalifna, uh, which means we have been interrupted. In a, way, in a sense, what he's saying is that uh, uh, our primary goal was finishing off Tigray. 
and we have been interrupted at, at the mid level. Okay, that's one. Let, let me just uh, put it in general terms, and then I will come back uh, to it one by one. The second one, of course, uh, the Amharas also, although they haven't stated it that way, they are the same. In the, we could use the same terms. They are also saying to Khalifna, uh, we have been interrupted because both of them, for for different reasons, by the way, uh, they, they are. Uh, at the mid level, you know, uh, their mid goal is, of course, vanquishing Tigray, uh, finishing off Tigray. But after that, their goals diverge. Uh, we'll look at that later. Uh, the next one is, of course, uh, uh, the uh, with the Pretoria Agreement. What the Pretoria Agreement has brought uh, is that it promises the return of lost territories to Tigray. That's part of the Pretoria Agreement. That, again, uh, of course, it goes against the expansionist policy of the Amharas, huh? and therefore another reason why they are uh, protesting uh, against the Pretoria Agreement. But at the same time, there is also another reason. Uh, if they lose Western Tigray, they are not only losing land, but they are also losing, uh, potentially losing the connection with Eritrea. Because Eritrea gets its potency eh? so far inside Ethiopia, so far as it has Amhara alliance with it. So far, the Amharas are allied with it. And the Amharas uh, could have uh, uh, a military potency inside the Amhara land in their rebellion. So far as they get, uh, you know, the military supplies and the military training from uh, Eritrea. As a result of that, you know, so the Western Tigray in particular is very important to both of them because the cutting off uh, uh, the relationship between Eritrea and, and, and the Amhara are lethal to both these two forces. The third one is uh, Eritrea has felt since the very beginning uh, with the uh, uh, Pretoria Agreement that there is potentially a rearrangement of alliances. And it was right, by the way, because uh, what happen, what's happening now is this rearrangement of alliance. Before it was three against one, uh, Ethiopia, the Ethiopian government, the, Amhara, the Amharas, and the Eritreans were allied against Tigray. But now that alliance is being fractured and now we, we are seeing already a different kind of alignment, Eritrea and Amhara, and potentially, although it's not uh, 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 at this point in time, uh, there could be a, a realignment between Abi uh, and Tigray. One thing is uh, very important about uh, this uh, Asaf factor, the Asaf factor, the, 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 port, the, the port of Asaf. We'll come back to that later. Uh, and then, of course, uh, there is Abi who has also used the Pretoria Agreement. He is now posturing himself as a guarantor of the Pretoria Agreement to the Western world. Now, the, he, did, he did it cleverly uh, because uh, this is a brainchild. The Pretoria Agreement is the, uh, the brainchild of the Western world. And hence, he is posturing himself as uh, the guarantor or the protector of the Pretoria Agreement. In a way, he has silenced them. The way he has silenced them before uh, during the, uh, the during the Tigray war, you know, saying that he's it's, it's working for the unity of uh, of Ethiopia. Now he is posturing himself as a uh, as a guarantor of the Pretoria Agreement. Is he really uh, a guarantor? We'll see also that this war in general. These are the, the four things in general. But what is the cause? You know, let me go back to the uh, uh, for the Eritrean government. Uh, uh, as I said before, uh, Eritrea is very much disappointed because uh, it feels that by not finishing off Tigray, eh, uh, it is facing two huge threats. One is the potential of Tigray coming back of, uh, from the ashes, you know, coming back because, you know, uh, uh, Eritrea has uh, uh, been one of the uh, three uh, actors in the Tigray genocide. Eh? So it's haunted by that picture. But the biggest one is Eritrea was aiming at the disintegration of Ethiopia. And it believed that unless Tigray is vanquished, unless Tigray is totally finished off, huh, there is no way, you know, well, let's, let me put it this way. 
Isaiah was not simply aiming at Magale, at reaching Magale. He was planning at reaching Addis Ababa with uh, the Amhara army. So in a way, we could say, in a way we could say that uh, by stopping halfway in, in Tigray, it's not only the, uh, the, 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 uh, the Tigray, the, Tig, the Tigray government, or even the, the, the Tigray itself that has been saved, but also the, uh, the Abi government. Abi came to realize that after the fact, not uh, not before, after the fact, he came to realize that. But we will go back to that later. Uh, the main so here is the, the the picture. The mid goal of Eritrea was uh, to vanquish, uh, uh, to finish off the Gray. But the bigger picture, that uh, the bigger goal that Eritrea wanted, the final goal was the, the, the disintegration of Ethiopia. That's where the uh, uh, where the the main goal differs from that of the Amharas. The Amharas have a different picture. They agreed with Eritrea on the mid goal, that is the finishing of Tigray, of Tigray. But they were not aiming at the disintegration of Ethiopia. What they were aiming, the Amhara elite, so, uh, I mean by the Amhara elite, what they were aiming at was, of course, bringing back the supremacy of the Amhara, or an Amhara led Ethiopia. That's what, what they were aiming at. So these were the two things. Now, uh, uh, if you look at it, at it again, uh, if you look, for example, at the uh, Pretoria Agreement with Amharas, huh? uh, we have seen that uh, uh, the return of the Amharas to the power. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, that couldn't be done without uh, preparing themselves or posturing themselves against Oromia. And it couldn't be done without uh, bringing uh, the federal arrangement to, to, uh, to its end. So it's a triple uh, uh, triple decked goal. They might not aim uh, at the three goals, you know, if things go, they get a little bit, you know, uh, uh, worse. They could aim only at uh, uh, restoring, you know, I mean, uh, putting a stop to the, uh, to, the, to the Pretoria Agreement when it comes to Western Tigray and Southern Tigray. Huh? Uh, and, uh, but these are the three main objects of the Amharas. And then for the Abi government, we have seen it has been uh, posturing uh, as a guarantor. But in reality, I don't think he uh, he wants Tigray to reach the Sudanese border. And there are many indications uh, as to why. Number one, even after uh, after uh, you know uh, the Pretoria Agreement, he hasn't done anything. He hasn't done any kind of steps to restore uh, the lost territories of uh, Tigray back to Tigray, back, back to Tigray government. And he had an ample time. It's not, I, I, I don't exactly remember the months probably could tell me uh, since the Pretoria Agreement, huh? but it has been a while. It has been a while and he hasn't taken any steps, but it's not only that. For, for instance, huh? the ethnic cleansing from the uh, western part of Tigray and southern part of Tigray has been continuing after the Pretoria Agreement. Tens of thousands of newly displaced uh, Tigrayans, especially from LMT, uh, I, I think it's about 30 or 35,000 of them uh, have come to, uh, to the western part of uh, uh, Tigray, uh, to the Shire area. And then there are also some uh, displaced from uh, the Raya region. No, so, not only has uh, uh, not only has the, uh, the displaced people not returned back to uh, uh, to their uh, you know to their land, but what we have seen is the reverse happening, and this has been happening while the federal government is in full control of that area. That's number one. The second thing is uh, the settlement of the Amharas have been going on. In fact, it it was accelerated after uh, the Pretoria Agreement especially in the western part of Tigray. That's number two. And then there is a policy. I've heard about the policies of uh, uh, the educational policy uh, inside Addis Ababa, how they have crafted it uh, to appease the Amharas in, the, uh, in western Tigray. That's again, uh, that cannot be done without the consent of the government. And then there is the, on the, at the disarmament level, while they have been disarming all the fanos inside uh, uh, Amhara, they have not been. Uh, they have not. They haven't disarmed the local uh, 
uh, funnels inside Western Tigray. They could have easily, I mean, uh, nobody has said, you know, uh, since uh, these are local people, nobody has asked them to expel the funnels from the, uh, from that area, but to disarm them. But they have not, dis intentionally, they haven't disarmed them. So all of this indicate that the, that the, the, the Abiy government had no intention to hand over the Western Tigray uh, to, uh, to the Tigray government. Now it might be forced for various reasons. One of the reasons that uh, we have mentioned is that it couldn't even control the area, the Western, uh, the Western part of Tigray. It couldn't even bring it to a total control. Part of the reason is the local Fanos are working in agreement with the funnels inside Amhara land eh, to transport eh, uh, arms and uh, trained militias from Eritrea to the Amhara land. As a result of that, it would be impossible for uh, the, 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 the federal government to stop this, this corridor unless it involves the TDF with it. So if the TDF is involved, then it could cap the total stop. So the, 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 the Abiy government is in, 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 a, uh, in a rather uh, uh, hard spot at this point in time. But in general, the, the, gover the Abiy government doesn't want to hand over, especially Western Tigray. I'm not sure about uh, Southern Tigray, but the, it's the strategic consequence of handing, of handling, of handing uh, Western Tigray to Tigray, uh, which means that Tigray would have a bigger leverage than uh, uh, the Abiy administration is comfortable with. Now, uh, if you look uh, uh, at the other reasons, for example, the federal arrangement, the, the government, the, 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 the uh, Abiy government also is now posturing itself the same way it has been posturing itself with uh, the Pretoria Agreement as a guarantor of uh, as a guarantor of the federal arrangement in Ethiopia. The new narrative that it is uh, uh, airing uh, these days is that the Amharas are trying to uh, dismantle the federal arrangement. Uh, they want a centralized uh, uh, nation led by the Amhara elite. This is the kind of narrative that has been issuing. But I mean, it's obvious from the past five years that the federal government, that the Addis Ababa federal government doesn't want the federal arrangement, at least in the way it is. It wants, in fact, an extreme form of, uh, cent uh, of uh, centralization. In a way, uh, we could say that uh, uh, federal, a federal arrangement without democracy is an oxymoron uh, because it doesn't exist. Uh, totally, it doesn't exist. Hence, uh, it's uh, it's bizarre when the Abiy government uh, tries to sell itself as the protector of the federal arrangement. Ex exactly the same also when it comes to the Oromia versus Amhara rivalry. Uh, I don't believe that uh, the uh, the uh, the Abiy government is siding uh, with any other uh, with, with any, uh, even with Tigray, Amhara, or any. It doesn't have a constituency that it calls its own. It often pits one against the other. But in general, one characteristic uh, that I have seen in between, uh, uh, in common uh, with uh, uh, Abi and Isaiah Safurke is that they don't have a group of population that they would claim it's all their own, their own. That has been both their weakness and their strength. Their strength because they could always manipulate the, these variables as if, you know, uh, because if they don't have any emotional link uh, to anyone, to any uh, population group, then they could easily manipulate them. It doesn't matter to them. For example, if Tigrians are dead in their millions, or Amharas, or Oromos, it doesn't bother him at all. So, again, uh, his posturing is that as, at this point in time, as if he cares for the Oromo people. Uh, I think uh, probably there is one uh, uh, word that we could understand, I believe, uh, to understand the 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 the, the, uh, the policy of uh, uh, Abiy government, that is the neutralization policy. Neutralization by neutralization, I mean, uh, I could uh, uh, 
by uh, by neutralization, I mean the neutralization of the, the old Habesha world at this point in time. He wants to neutralize the old Habesha world. By that, I mean uh, Amhara, Tigray, and Eritrea. For example, if you look at uh, 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 the Amharas, why does uh, he want to neutralize? How does he want to neutralize them? Okay, the ongoing one against the Amharas, for example, uh, the disarmament of uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the total uh, Amhara area, uh, it, which started from uh, disarming the Luyuhail and uh, it went further to uh, uh, disarming the Fanos. This is part of the neutralizing, how do I neutralize the Amhara area? And then, of course, there is the cutting of links. Uh, he's trying to uh, uh, cut it from uh, Eritrea. We have talked about that, you know, by occupying West Tigray. Uh, if he cuts them from Eritrea, then that would be one part, one way of neutralizing them. The third one is he's trying to neutralize, to cut them, to cut them off from the rest of Ethiopia, which means the rest of other killers. And the narrative that we have been talking about, you know, that narrative of the Amharas trying to, uh, the supremacy of the Amharas is meant to appeal to other killers, which have often identified the Amharas as the Neftenyas. And the other one is, of course, by pitting them against the Oromia, they are he is cutting them off from the Oromia. And then, of course, from Tigray, he has already done that work. Uh, you know, the, after these two years of involvement, he has, uh, uh, has, made, he has involved them in this big genocide against Tigray. So in a sense, he has isolated them and at the same time uh, neutralized them. The same thing is, goes on, on the Eritrean side. He is trying to neutralize Eritrea now. First of all, by cutting them off from Tigray. Again, he did the same thing by involving them massively in the, in the, Tigray, in the Tigray genocide. Eritrea has cut itself from the only buffer zone that has been preventing it, you know, uh, uh, before. And uh, now he's cutting them off from Amharas. And then he's, trying, uh, he's, cutting, uh, he's cutting them off from also from Afar. From Afar. The reason why he's cutting them from Afar is by dangling Asab, you know, the, the one uh, that I mentioned before. Uh, that the dangling of Asab as a port, you know, that Ethiopia should seek is uh, not only uh, for the Ethiopians in general, but for also for the Afars in particular. The Afars would be the one region that would be totally ins sensitive. I mean, uh, 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 kind of, uh, uh, they will make it their own, uh, their own goal, you know, of, of Arachian Asab, because as, uh, the Afar region would be the primary uh, beneficiary uh, of uh, uh, if Asab is uh, taken away from Eritrea. So in a sense, he's using Asab to this, uh, I mean, to, uh, because the, there is, after the Amharas, um, you know, uh, the one part, the one people that have been working with Eritrea in this war against Tigray were the Afars. The Eritreans have been working with the Afars against Tigray. Now he has to break that. If he has to break that, he will have to dangle Asab to them. So in a way, Eritrea also is being isolated now and uh, uh, to a great extent being neutralized. Tigray, for obvious reasons, we have seen it in the two, three years where it has been extremely weakened uh, by the war and genocide. He has successfully cut it off from Eritrea. He has successfully cut it off from Amhara. He has successfully cut it off from Afar. So, again, by uh, by using you know the Western Tigray uh, by uh, by having an ambiguous uh, program uh, of Western Tigray, he is trying also to isolate Tigray from Sudan. So, in a sense, he is also aiming at fully neutralizing Tigray. So, this is, I believe. Uh, the neutralization policy that uh, Abi is working hard on. So now we could talk about <laughs> uh, how, uh, if you want me, uh, if, if you want to stop here, I will stop here, but of how, wh what does Tigray have to do, you know, in case, in this, in this scenario, what is it uh, that Tigray can do uh, under this scenario? We probably could talk about that. Uh, if you have any questions in between, because I'm talking, I'm the only one who's talking. Huh? Uh, you could go ahead and ask me. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Well, uh, I think um, you just going to um, come back to what um, Tigray's position should be, what it should do, uh, what Tigray's reading of of the dynamic should be. Um, but I think it's, it's um, the, the, your description of of the conflict out of the players. It's, it's, um, it's a labyrinthine network of players, a very, very complex network of players and incentives and objectives and 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 and, um, and goals. And actually, one is reminded of, of the complexity of politics in the Middle East, for instance, the players and, you know, with proxy wars and mm -hmm. foreign forces supporting this uh, group or the other. And even if he spent days and days trying to understand um, what is happening, it's very, very complex. Actually, the more time he spent, the more difficult it becomes to understand and the, your description of what is happening in Ethiopia and in Amhara is redolent of, 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 of that but I think Yosef I'm going to ask you I think the main cause for the for the splintering of different groups in the, the preacher agreement I, I did just mentioned and one of the things that happened then was Abiy went out on a limb without counseling the what well, the guidance of Isaias without agreeing with Isaias he went to South Africa and signed the agreement and that, if you would pardon my friend, pissed off Isaias. I think that is when Isaias started to say Tokolifna, or we've been interrupted, as, as, you, as you said. And one is struck by why Abiy felt confident enough to go on his own and sign the agreement without seeking the permission of Isaias, given that they had been joined in the heap before. And according to some people's assessment, Every move that Abiy made was at the blessing and yes. guidance of of Isaias. So, what what changed in, in what changed South Africa time, for yeah. Abiy to have felt confident enough to to go out on a limb and sign the the agreement, knowing that it was going to offend Isaias? Well, uh, I think it's, uh, probably it's obvious by now. Uh, uh, there are two things I, I believe. One is, of course, the Western pressure. Uh, the Western pressure has been extreme, huh? uh, and the economic uh, fallout uh, inside Ethiopia as a result of this uh, of this war, uh, we have uh, we have seen it. It's uh, uh, an almost it has uh, what has happened in Ethiopia is an economic meltdown. Huh? Uh, so that has been uh, part of the reason. But I believe in the end, why didn't he consult Isaias? Is to me. Huh? Uh, uh, very obvious in the sense that Isaias will never agree to it. Uh, Isaias would never agree to it. He knew that uh, if he talks to Isaias about this one, Isaias will never, uh, will never come to an agreement with him. So there is no way that Isaias could uh, uh, could say, okay, uh, let's meet them halfway or anything like that, you know, because uh, Isaias' uh, strategy, as I have stated before, is the total vanquishment of the guy. And for Abi, I believe there are two things. One is the Western pressure, uh, you know, due to the economic and other reasons. Huh? But the main one came to him uh, along the way, uh, in the process, in the process of this. You know, he came to realize that huh? uh, uh, it's not only uh, it's aim, it's goal is not only uh, aimed at weakening Tigray, but also at weakening Ethiopia. I think that came to him. He came to realize later. I'm not sure. I wouldn't. Pin, I, uh, I wouldn't pinpoint uh, the, at the time when he reached that conclusion. But it ca it became clear to him that the aim is not Magale but Addis Ababa, and that the key is you know they were watching each other in a way you know because uh, the key to Isaias' uh, uh, strategy is uh, the Amhara Alliance, and. Uh, for Abi, uh, that was also the danger of uh, uh, of Eritrea's uh, uh, alliance with him, that it could only be maintained in so far as he appeases Isaias with his alliance too. It's, it's almost like uh, uh, a moving target, you know, a moving target. Uh, but it is, uh, um, I don't know how to put it. It's almost like uh, it's. You have to find the right formula along the way. As, as, as the target keeps moving, you have to find a formula uh, that will sustain you for that moment. And at a certain point, Abi understood that the final goal uh, of Eritrea is uh, the, the weakening of Ethiopia. 
And precisely because of that, he wants to keep it. For example, he doesn't want Tigray at this point in time to totally disarm itself. I mean, there has been some kind of disarmament inside Tigray, but he doesn't want the total disarmament of Tigray at this point in time because he realizes that if he does that, then it would be easy for both for the Amharas and the Eritreans to, uh, uh, to uh, I mean, uh, uh, run all over Tigray, uh, run all over Tigray. The key is this one, Tigray being at the middle. And it's not simply geographic stance. For example, the Western Tigray uh, would be enough. If it's, if it's simply geography, that's that issue. Huh? Then, uh, uh, I mean, uh, taking full control of uh, uh, the Western Tigray would be enough uh, uh, as 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 a as something as a ball as a bulwark, you know, in between uh, uh, Ethiopia and Eritrea. But that is not the issue. The issue is the fact that not only t uh, the, the, the Tigray is a land, but there is a huge forest in Tigray. Potentially a huge forest in Tigray. The TDF uh, that still exists now, and potentially also, you know, uh, in generally. Uh, uh, the, the, the kind of uh, uh, army that it could quickly mobilize, especially with the help of uh, Abi. Now, that is the one thing that is preventing, uh, that has prevented uh, uh, er, uh, the Eritrea Amhara Alliance to do what it wanted to do. So I believe that at the beginning, it could have been uh, the economics and, uh, uh, of course, the pressure from the Western world uh, that has uh, uh, kept him, uh, you know, uh, in alliance with the uh, with the Pretoria Agreement. But later, later, I'm not sure when, was it during the 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 the, the Pretoria Agreement or later? But now I'm I'm sure that Abi has reached a conclusion that Tigray has become a buffer zone, a buffer zone huh? uh, for him, he, that he couldn't. Uh, prevail uh, as a uh, as a leader in Ethiopia uh, without Tigray working as a buffer zone. I call it, in fact, the, the, the politics of buffer zones. You know why? When the Isis army was interrupted uh, uh, from marching all the way to Magali, it was not only Tigray that was saved, but also the Abiy government. Abiy might have not realized this at that time, uh, uh, but later he came to realize that. Now, here is the thing. Uh, the question is that Tigray realize that it has this huge leverage, and how does it uh, and how does it plan to use it? Because up to now, uh, Abi wants it uh, wants Tigray to have that kind of power. But at a certain point in time, if he feels, for example, that uh, uh, the Amhara region is fully pacified, fully neutralized, that Eritrea is fully neutralized, then will be the time that he will ask Tigray to fully disarm. Precisely because he wouldn't feel a threat from, uh, from either uh, 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 Eritrea or Amhara or the alliance in between the two. Now, the question is, does Tigray realize, because this, there is a time factor also involved in this, because does Tigray realize that right now at this point in time, it has a huge leverage in its hands. And how does it plan to use that, uh, that, 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 that leverage? And then there is also this uh, uh, absurd as it seems. Huh? There is also this reverse issue. At a, for example, let's, let's, uh, I, I keep postponing uh, the, the, the Asab issue. If you look at Asab, recently, many times, uh, uh, Abi has been uh, has been talking about Asab that we, the, we need a port, and he has been mentioning it many times. Now, here is the thing: he cannot uh, uh, fight a war against Eritrea and win without the Tigray, uh, without the uh, support of Tigray. He knows that. He knows that. But the question is this one. Uh, he also is aiming only at Asab. There is a reason why he's aiming only at Asab. He's not aiming at 
Eritrea in general. The reason is, if he, uh, for example, if Eritrea is totally defeated, then the problem would be that Tigray would have uh, a huge leverage because then there would be a huge part of Eritrea uh, that would be Tigrinya speaking people that would join Tigray. So he wants to avoid that. Even uh, he wants to avoid totally that, that scenario. That's why he's only aiming at Asim, at Asim only. Now, given that, I do believe that the Tigrayan leadership also understands this. Understands in a sense that aiming towards uh, Asim uh, and helping uh, uh, Abi uh, to, uh, to regain Asim will come at their own expense. Not only will it weaken them, but also it would uh, complete their encirclement. They will have the rest of Eritrea as an enemy of Tigray, after Asib. And then they will have the Afars, a much more powerful Afar region, eh? that will also be permanently against the Tigrayans. Eh? Then, of course, there will be Amharas on the other side. And if he somehow uh, uh, controls also the western part of Tigray, then Tigray would remain completely encircled. So it will be to their detriment to fight uh, with, uh, with Abi, to make an ally with Abi eh? uh, for, uh, for Asab. So you see, now what becomes is, if, 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 I, I, I don't think they are stupid enough to do that, if, but if they don't do that, then it means, ironically, there will be the buffer zone for Eritrea. Imagine that, just switch it. Before the, uh, now they are becoming the buffer zone for, uh, for uh, Abi. At a certain point in time, they can be a buffer zone to Eritrea. And the Eritrea realizes it. Isaias is not a fool. He has already realized this. He is, in fact, what I have heard is that many parts, he's sending signals to the, uh, to the uh, uh, Tigray leadership. Eh? that he wants to talk with them. In a sense, he realizes that uh, uh, if he uh, loses the Amhara uh, uh, as a result of uh, uh, the, the link, this, the disruption of the link in the Western Tigray, then the only way that he could fight back against the Ethiopia would be through Tigray. Impossible as it seems, uh, he's entertaining that idea. Because he knows, you know, he, he moves, he makes his moves almost mathematically, you know? So in a sense, without any emotions involved in it. And the Tigrayan government also has this in its hands, which means that it has also a huge leverage eh, in its hands against Eritrea and then against, against the, 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 uh, uh, the Abi government. The question is, how is uh, the Tigray government going to use this leverage. And if it is going to use this leverage, it has to be timely on timely basis. As I said before, if both Eritrea and Amhara are pacified, then uh, it would be, uh, uh, it, it could be an impossible, impossible for Tigray to uh, use the leverage it has. So it has to be on timely basis. What does Tigray have to do? That is probably to me uh, the greatest question. Mm -hmm. I think I had I had briefly lost you for, for a couple of seconds, but I, I got the, the the gist of what you said towards the end, um, Yosef. Um, so one of the I think we're going to dwell on a little bit on Abiy and um, Isaias and what characterizes their their relationship now and how it has evolved and how it has changed now. The assumption that a lot of people had in the beginning when they Abiy and Isaias signed the war pact was that it was a um, it was a marriage of conv convenience that Abiy knew what Isaias yeah. was after yeah, and yeah. Isaias knew what Abiy was after yeah. um but some of your analysis would seem to suggest that there were aspects of Isaias calculation that Abiy wasn't really aware of despite the fact that Abiy had a lot of advisors who worked with Isaias, like Rohan Naga, like Andergat Jobsege, and a lot of other people who were mm -hmm. under the command and control of Isaias and who really knew 
what Isaias was um, maneuvering, and they went on to, be, to, to become advisors of Abiy. So one would presume that Abiy would be up to speed in terms of what Isaias was um, after. Um, but you don't seem to fully subscribe to that, to that view. Yosef, if I if if my understanding of what you said is correct, well, yes, yes, uh, uh, I don't fully subscribe to that idea. But at the same time, I don't think uh, uh, Abi uh, has been out uh, outperformed in this thing so far. Uh, he's the one who is uh, outsmarting uh, Isaias, I believe. At a certain point, he was almost fooled. I believe he was almost fooled because if uh, the, the the assault on Tigray uh, had been complete and i don't see why how, how he would have stopped it you know and uh, uh, it's, it's simply because the tagrayan said okay this is enough huh? uh, we'll go to uh, the pretoria uh, agreement you know uh, it's because of them that ha has been stopped that's one of the reasons why i think that abi was not fully aware of uh, what was happening there had that had happened, you know, uh, Abi would have been in a big problem. Had uh, the, the 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 combined army of uh, Abi, uh, Eritrea, and Amhara totally vanquished Tigray, uh, I mean, more than a million of people have died so far. But it means it would have been a disaster. Two three million people have been. It would have been the total destruction of Tigray. The total destruction of Tigray would mean would have meant. Huh, that there would be no place for the federal, the, the federal army couldn't be sustained inside Tigray, which means that uh, the gap between the Amhara and the Eritrea would have been collapsed. It would have been collapsed the same way it had collapsed in Western Tigray. It would have collapsed. And that would be uh, uh, the place from which they would start marching on to uh, Addis Ababa for different reasons. Uh, Eritrea would have probably, uh, you know, uh, uh, helped the Amharas to get into Addis Ababa, and then would have, would have left. The Amharas wouldn't have, would have been unable to sustain it, so there would have been most probably uh, a civil war, and that's exactly what Eritrea wanted. It didn't want uh, the Amharas to, uh, to, 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 I mean, uh, to go back to the, <laughs> to the old Ethiopia because that would be a solidified Ethiopia, which could also turn against uh, against uh, Isaias. Because Isaias knows, uh, you know, the, the guys that he, ha he has been helping in Asmara, you know, the Amhara guys, he knows them, you know. If they had any chance, they are the ones who have been calling Asab, Asab, Asab. So if they had any chance, they would uh, go back uh, uh, and fight. So for him, uh, there is no difference between Abi and the any uh, as, as an Amhara government or a Romo government. Because the potential of any uh, uh, stabilized Ethiopian government uh, uh, looking for uh, a port outlet huh, uh, would be there all the time. So what he wanted was uh, a disintegrating Ethiopia, uh, an Ethiopia that would keep fighting a destabilized Ethiopia or a disintegrated Ethiopia. Now, they know each other, but in Abi's calculation, I believe, you know, the, that's why I believe that the Tigray leadership had saved Abi's skin without him realizing at the beginning. Because the moment they stopped the war, they stopped the uh, Amhara and the Eritrean forces from marching to Addis Ababa. And that's what he came to appreciate later. Even he doesn't say it, but he came to appreciate it. That's why when he realized that, he doesn't want them to totally get disarmed, precisely because of that. But then again, you know, he's overreaching. He doesn't uh, get it, you know. He's overreaching in a sense that he feels that he could neutralize the three of them. The three of them, you know, the, the old Habesha world, you know, uh, Amhara, Tigray, and Eritrea. He wants to neutralize them. That is not attainable because it's easy to shift, you know. Even, the, uh, for example, the Amhara elite, you know, uh, for all their stupidity, you know, huh? uh, they didn't come to understand that the only way to make peace with Tigray is to let it be. Uh, to let it be is the way it was, you know, with its uh, territories intact. Not of up to now, not a single Amhara elite, even the uh, the the, the so-called you know 
uh, good ones, you know, like uh, the Dutu or uh, uh, who is he, the other guy who has been imprisoned now uh, in, in, uh, in, uh, in the inside Ethiopia, or uh, I couldn't remember him. Yes. Yeah, but many of them, you know, uh, the best of them, you know, the ones who really uh, uh, were uh, 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 against the genocide, uh, against what was going on inside Tigray, you know, huh? uh, they never came, you know, to the, to, the, to, to, to the root of the cause, you know. If any one of them had said, okay, let Tigray be, you know, uh, let it be, that's the only way we could work. Uh, you know, together, you know, uh, in dismantling this regime. Huh? If they had done that, they could have gone a long way of repairing the, uh, the, 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 between, uh, the peace between the Amharas and the, uh, the, the Tigrayans. This world. Uh, and they could have easily uh, dismantled this regime. But somehow it has become, uh, I, 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 have, I have said it has become a rope around their neck that it has put on, on them because at the moment he said, uh, you know, Western Tigray, uh, uh, from the very beginning of the war, they couldn't disentangle themselves from this one. And as a result of that, they still don't have any any strategy, you know, of how to, uh, uh, they, they are trying on their own, on their own. The Amharas are trying to do it on their own. It, it would be impossible. It would be impossible to do it on their own. Had they had uh, made peace uh, with uh, with Tigray, then it could have he could they could have easily gotten uh, rid of uh, Abi. So to me, it seems that, uh, uh, as I said before, uh, to me it seemed that just after the end, probably during the 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 the, the, the uh, Pretoria Agreement, or just after that. He came to realize, Abi came to realize the importance of the Pretoria Agreement to his to his survival as uh, to his uh, survival as a uh, as a leader in uh, Ethiopia. Hmm. Well, um, in terms of Yosef, you mentioned the 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 Amhara elites and how mistaken they have been vis-a-vis -vis the position that they have taken in Tigray. I think. Um, maybe you know better, but um, what happened is their, their um, hatred and animosity and even paranoid of, of Tigray trumped any other consideration, which meant that the judgments and the decisions they have been making were um, always clouded by, by that. And when you have your priorities completely warped and misaligned, you are bound to make wrong decisions and you're going to always shoot yourself in the foot and i think that is what has been happening through the amhara elites in terms of the positions that they have taken with respect to the guy maybe um maybe lidosu is an exception because he has been making a reasonably uh, acceptable yeah, yeah. decisions but the others i think that is what what has happened but we're going yeah. to come to the amhara elites in terms of the position that they should now be taking um although in a very very bizarre state of affairs, everybody in Addis Ababa now has fallen silent. Nobody is, you know, protesting, nobody is saying anything in terms of what's happening in Amhara. Um, I think Abi has managed to totally muzzle them and no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. them. But in terms of the Pretoria Agreement, um, Yosef, you mm -hmm. earlier, you mentioned that Abi is trying to position himself as a guarantor of the agreement, mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. to his Western audience um, yeah forces audience or or donors he could say mm -hmm. and part of the reason is of course because he wants to tick the boxes that they want him to tick so that you know he would be eligible for the loan yeah. and other and other mm -hmm. and other mm -hmm. thing uh, I of can't hear you. Uh, all right. it's, uh, huh. it's getting. Uh, I can't hear you uh, uh, about his right. commitment to okay. implementing the Pretoria Agreement. But one wonders. I think this is something that um, a lot of people want to to know. Whether or not that, and in a way, I think you briefly mentioned that earlier. But whether the Tigray government and the Ethiopian regime have the same reading and are on the same page in terms of the end game of the Pretoria Agreement, what they want to, to see delivered. So when the Ethiopian regime says that 
it is committed to implementing the pre-trial agreement. And the, when the Tigray government says the same thing, are they talking about the same thing or not? Well, I mean, uh, uh, when uh, when uh, uh, referring to the pre-trial agreement, they kind of understand exactly what it is, you know, uh, both of them. Uh, but the question is, uh, I believe uh, Abi uh, probably wouldn't mind uh, uh, when it comes to this, uh, the southern uh, uh, Tigray, uh, the Raya region. Uh, he'd probably hand it over to uh, the, the Tigray government eventually. But the question that uh, keeps coming back is on the western Tigray, and that is uh, for strategic reasons, the Sudanese border. Once that, uh, once the Tigray gets that, it will get too strong. That's the fear of Abi. Now he has been coming up with ingenious ways of, uh, I think I have heard that once that, he asked the Tigray government for both of them to administer, to administer it. Uh, he has asked them that question. You know, if we could administer it, both of us, you know, the government, and the, uh, the, which is absolutely uh, a new thing. You know, it's, uh, he, he would be there, not as a federal government, but as part of the uh, uh, regional government or the Khalil government in, Tigray, in that area. So he wanted some kind of a hybrid that guarantees him control over that area. So you could see that he has been looking at it in many different ways when it comes to Western Tigray. And as we have looked at before, you know, uh, he's uh, even at this point in time when he's fighting all the wars in all the battles inside uh, Amhara against the Fanos, he's lenient towards the Fanos inside, uh, uh, inside Western Tigray. So up to now, all the indications are he's trying to find a formula, a formula within that area that applies in particular to that area that would prevent Tigray from having uh, total access to the, uh, to the border with the border of Sudan. He wants to control that border of Sudan. And he, doesn't, he hasn't figured it out yet, you know, and it keeps changing, of course. Now, for example, if, as I said before, if he could not control, if he, it would be impossible for him to, uh, to control that border, you know, if Eritrea still manages to send troops and uh, 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 arms as, uh, to the Amhara region, then he might be forced, he might be forced uh, to allow TDF uh, to come into that area because TDF would do, uh, of course, a good job of uh, doing that. So that's why I feel, in fact, you know, the, the, the reason why I'm afraid, you know, Tigray is not using its leverage properly at this point in time is that it could probably push for these things because there is a weak point on the on the side of Ethiopia. This is a time for to push, you know, huh, uh, for the return of the uh, of the of these territories huh, right now, because uh, especially if the war in uh, uh, in Amhara continues, and I don't think as as the people say that it will come to a stop quickly. Uh, I don't think so. You know, they could pacify the, uh, the big cities, but it's, it's not easy to uh, pacify uh, an area as huge as uh, Amhara. And at the same time, with the Amhara people at the local, and I believe at the local level, they have a genuine concern. Huh? Uh, so far as their genuine concerns are not met. And then there is also the, uh, the, uh, the Amhara land is also uh, has a huge border with uh, with the Sudan, which is now in this array, so they could get in and out from Sudan. Huh? Uh, so b for all these reasons, I think the uh, the resistance is, it might not stay in its very potent form as it is, but it will stay for a long time, and Eritrea will use its damn best, you know, uh, to uh, arm the Amharas, you know. And one of the things that it might be able to do is my, my fear is that it will use Sudan. It will use the weakness of Sudan now, the anarchy in Sudan, to arm them also through the Sudanese border. So for all these reasons, the, uh, the Abi government needs the TDF to bring order in, in that area. Not only in that area, also to block, for example, there is a TDF army, there has been a TDF army in the Sudan, the Sudan uh, for a while. Uh, a, a large contingent of army uh, was in uh, western, uh, on the uh, western, uh, uh, the eastern part of Sudan, of course, but uh, on uh, on the Sudanese soil. Now that uh, that army could prevent any Eritrean uh, uh, incursion 
toward this uh, uh, western part of Amhara because it could block them, it could block them from uh, from going all the way to because uh, the, right now uh, uh, what Eritrea controls from Omna Hajar huh, all the way to Sahel. That's the border that it controls. But it has also, it has been aiming to go downwards uh, uh, to the southwards to uh, Gadarif, the Gadarif area. But the Gadarif area is now under control of the TDF. So with the help of the TDF inside Tigray and the TDF in Sudan, the, the, the flow of arms could completely stop from, uh, from, uh, from Eritrea. And that uh, and, the, and the army that it could do it is not the federal army but the TDF. So in a way, uh, it would stop the flow of army in Amhara, and so it would be to the advantage of uh, uh, of uh, Abi. But it could only be that by returning a full control of uh, uh, Western Tigray. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so there is one sense in which Abi Abi would want the Tigray government and the TDF to take control of Western Tigray so that they would pacify the region so that they would prevent um, mm -hmm. Eritrea and Amhara forces from plotting anything against him. Yeah. Uh, but there is also another sense in which he doesn't like Tigray government to take control of Sudan and that's mm -hmm. because that would make Tigray a little bit too strong for his liking. Yeah, and exactly. I think that is a, that is the conundrum for which is trying to find a, a formula, find a solution, that is a, formula it makes perfect sense but in, so one of the things that people say for instance when they try to explain why it is that there is fighting in amhara one of the things they say is that that is because the fanom and the amhara special militia refused to disarm mm -hmm. when they were told that it was about time for them to leave western tigray and hand it over to western tigray and that is one of the main reasons why they they are um, where they are um, the the Fano and the mm -hmm. the Abiyu regime. Mm -hmm. So presumably you wouldn't necessarily agree with that because because you, you're saying mm -hmm. that he's on the way of of, mm -hmm. of finding that that formula. Uh, yeah. uh, whereas if we were to assume mm -hmm. that the reason he's fighting is to disarm the Fano so that he would be able to uh -huh. let Tigray take control. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Would mean that he has already sorted out and found the formula. So, like, what is yeah, the yeah. balance in terms of that? Well, it, yes, my uh, you know, is clear. Yeah, it's clear. Uh, you know, uh, he wanted to, of course, disarm the Fanos inside Amhara Ridge. Uh, that, there is no doubt about that, huh? uh, because he felt that uh, uh, they would eventually threaten uh, uh, his uh, uh, his leadership in inside Addis Ababa. Huh? So he wanted to. Uh, neutralize the Amhara region, as he has also neutralized Addis Ababa, as you have been telling us now. You know, Addis Ababa is completely neutralized by now. The reason why the people are not rebelling, for example, in Addis Ababa or demonstrating is precisely because he has pitted uh, the Oromos against uh, uh, the Amharas, and uh, uh, they are watching each other. Uh, there is no way that the different uh, ethnic groups in Addis Ababa uh, would... Uh, work for a common cause. Uh, that's no more possible. Uh, so in a sense, by pitting one against the other, he has neutralized Addis Ababa. Now he also is trying to neutralize Amhara. But at the same time, don't forget that he's also aiming to neutralize Tigray. So he's, I believe it's, uh, uh, he's trying to find a formula, you know, whereby, for example, uh, Look at what he has done in uh, the Humera area, in that, uh, in that, precisely in that area which counts the most. He has, in fact, he has uh, he has disarmed the 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 the, the, the Fanos of Salamti, which is further uh, inside uh, uh, inside Tigray. Now, he doesn't have a problem with disarming them. He has also disarmed the uh, Fanos in uh, Raya. So. The only problem that he has is in that particular the Walqaiti area, uh, the Humara Walqaiti area. That is where he's focused at. And when it comes to that, he quickly understood, you know, that disarming the uh, uh, the uh, local fanos, uh, the local fanos over there would work against his interests, because he's keeping them there precisely in order as an anti dot uh, to the TDF presence if it comes to that. 
So he's looking at that formula. I'm sure it's it's not going to work. Huh? And part of the reason why it's, it's not going to work is that if the Tigrayans know their advantage at this point in time, their leverage at this point in time, and force him, he should be forced. I, I, that's what I'm saying. He should be forced to... Uh, to stop his ambiguity, you know, uh, the, the ambiguous uh, uh, policy that he has in that area, eh? and to uh, implement uh, the, uh, the 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 Pretoria Agreement as is, as is, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 they are mute. I couldn't hear you. Huh? I couldn't hear you. Yeah, are mute. Uh, uh, What's about now? Now, yes, yes, yes. Now it came back. Yeah. Uh -huh. Wait, let, give me a sec. All right. <laughs> what What's happened? Now? Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can hear you now. I can hear you now. Yeah, yeah. I can hear you now. One of the. Just give me a sec. Okay. It should work now. Yeah, yeah, it should, it's working now. Yeah, yeah. All right, but carry on. I'm sorry I interrupted you, but some strange thing happened, and but it happened to me before. Something that I should learn to, okay. to handle. But anyways, carry on, Yosef. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry I interrupted you. Uh, no, no, no. I, I, I'm almost done with that question. You know, uh, uh, what I'm saying is that uh, there is this ambiguity uh, that is hiding behind, uh, uh, that Abi is hiding behind. And for the Tigray leadership is to make it clear that they are not going to uh, uh, accept any ambiguity when it comes to any compromise, you know, the, when it comes to uh, uh, Western Tigray. And uh, they should do it now. That's my uh, my belief because this is the time that they have a huge leverage yeah. over him, over him, and they shouldn't waste time. Huh? They should tell him, you know, there is no ambiguity in the in the in the, in the Pretoria Agreement. It clearly states the return of uh, its territories to. Uh, I mean, uh, as it was uh, pre uh, uh, the war, huh? and uh, uh, they should do that. In I I am. In a way, I believe that he will accept it. He will accept it because he doesn't have any other option. So uh, I don't think how they will become a threat to him, you know, given that uh, Tigray is not going to war now against Ethiopia. It's obvious. Huh? Uh, Tigray is not going to secede at this point in time, at least, uh, as I know, as far as, far as I know. Huh? And so he should accept that Tigray is not going to be a threat, but Tigray should have its potency. You should accept that. You shouldn't try to totally neutralize Sudan. I mean, uh, uh, Tigray, uh, precisely because of many factors. There is Eritrea, there is Amhara um, uprising, uh, and for its survival, you know, uh, it needs uh, to remain potent, and he should accept that. He should accept that. Uh, or else, you know, uh, he will keep juggling, you know, as he has been doing. Uh, it's uh, the, the, the whole area is in a mess, you know. Uh, it's. Uh, 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 Abi uh, likes to play, uh, you know, uh, with uh, uh, populations. You know, he keeps he looks at them as variables that he could uh, easily maneuver around. You know, uh, and he has been to some extent he has been successful, and that has encouraged him. And he, and if he, uh, precisely because he doesn't have any empathy or any feeling or any connection with any people, that has become also a strength in a way. Because he keeps, you know, uh, I remember, you know, uh, when it started, it was with Gedeo uh, at the south, uh, on the southern part of uh, 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 Ethiopia. There was about a million people displaced, and there was no feeling at all. Then, of course, the Oromos uh, uh, that were displaced with, uh, uh, with, uh, 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 in a conflict with, uh, the, uh, with uh, the, uh, the Somali region. And it went on and on and on and on and on, and it, it doesn't leave any kind of. Uh, 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 you don't see it uh, in his face, you know. Uh -huh. It's not as if he feels the pain of the people. So it's easy for him to keep maneuvering. He should stop that. He would only stop that if it threatens his government. And I believe right at this moment he can't afford to to, uh, to do that with Tigray. And the Tigray leadership should take the initiative uh, to uh, to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I think I think it's good that you you mentioned um, of actually considerable length the leverage that you think the Tigray government has uh, today. I think that let's uh, dive in into some of the discussions that Tigrayans have been having the, the past couple of uh, mm -hmm. days in the light of what is happening in in in, in Amhara. Um, some some Amhara based or not Amhara based, but some Amhara affiliated media outlets. Is, had accused the Tigray government of having sent troops to the Amhara region. And I don't know if you have read it, but the Tigray government was uh, forced to issue a statement yesterday mm -hmm. um, saying that that is a categorical lie and that the Tigray government hasn't sent any troops to, to, to Amhara. But of course, there has been discussions in, 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 Tigray, in, in Tigray circles about how or what the position of the Tigray government should be, how we did that Tigray government should see and perceive what's happening in Amhara, whether or not we should be militarily involved. And some of them, of course, are you know, fantastic discussions because mm -hmm. a lot of what we could do depends on what the Ethiopian regime um, demands of the Tigray government because in a way, the Tigray government as it is today is an extension of the federal government. government. Yeah. But... What are some of the? I don't know how, like how much into the leverages that you mentioned you could um, delve into now, but what do you think are the the leverage that the government um, has now, and what positions should the government take with respect to the many aspects that you, you mentioned, whether that is military or diplomatic or political. Well, uh, I think, you know, uh, the response of the Tigray government, I have heard it and I, I believe it's appropriate. Uh, it's, it's the right way uh, to do it, you know. It's not uh, uh, it hasn't been involved in the uh, in the war against Samharas, which uh, which is right, huh? and I don't believe uh, it should be involved. Huh? Uh, but at the same time, uh, the war against Fanos huh, uh, is uh, also uh, impacts uh, uh, Tigray because these are the very funders that have uh, that are that have refused to uh, 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 to let go of uh, uh, the Tigrayan land, uh, uh, both in western and uh, uh, southern Tigray. So uh, the war against them is to some extent beneficiary to uh, Tigray. Uh, one has to look at that. Of course, there is. Uh, you have to look at the war at different levels. There is the Hamahara elite, there is Eritrea, of course, at the top, huh? uh, which is uh, helping them for a different reason. And then there is the Amhara elite, which have been uh, accepting Eritrea's help for a different reason. And then there is the Fanos, of course, that have been uh, armed and trained, uh, most of them in Eritrea or by Eritreans, huh? uh, and doing the fighting. And then, of course, there is the, the, the population in general, uh, which have other legitimate reasons for the uprising. So looking at all of this, I think uh, going to war uh, against uh, uh, Fanos inside Amhara land uh, would mean also going to war against uh, the Amhara people. So this should be totally avoided. That's, uh, 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 and that's so far, that's exactly what they have done. But there are Fanos inside Tigray, inside Fanos inside Tigray, huh? uh, in uh, either Raya or uh, Western Tigray, or in uh, uh, those places. I believe, you know, uh, at this point in time, most of them have uh, left uh, Tigray, huh? uh, but there are others that have been the local localized ones. Those ones have to be disarmed. Huh? And one of the things that Tigray could do is insist. Uh, to the government of Ethiopia. Now that they have no more funnels, for example, in uh, southern uh, part of Tigray, eh? uh, there are no more funnels in, uh, let's say, Salamti. Eh? Uh, so in those areas where they have been cleared of funnels, the Tigray uh, should enter. Uh, Tigray should enter. The, even TDF should enter momentarily, at least, as they should enter uh, over there. And uh, that those land should be returned back, even if it means a piecemeal one. Okay, and then of course there is the the, the bigger question is about Western Tigray, and that's where they should also uh, forcefully say, yeah, uh, we have more than a million uh, people, displaced people in Tigray. Uh, no, no, many of them are not even getting the the food assistance that they used to get. You know what uh, WFP and USAID have done. Huh? 
they have inter they have interrupted the uh, the aid that they used to give to those people, and as a result of that, many are even dying right now. So, Tigray cannot afford uh, to lose more of these people huh? uh, through starvation uh, and uh, diseases and whatever huh? at this point in time. So, this is a high time that those people should be returned to their land, especially in the western part of Tigray. Also, there are uh, uh, refugees in Sudan that are also having uh, similar problems precisely because of the uh, civil war in, in Sudan. And those people should be returned. If it requires, they should be accompanied by the TDF. Even if it means, you know, there are certain lands, for example, uh, nearby lands like uh, Ad, uh, Ad Gushu, uh, and those areas, you know, just after crossing the uh, Takaza River, you know, those lands are uh, there are no uh, uh, militias over there. There are no fanos over there. Most of the fanos are at the far end of the Western Tigray, in the Dansha area, and in the, uh, uh, what do you call, not Salamti, but the, uh, uh, give me the other one, and the, 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 the other region, which is uh, on the border of uh, uh, or Welkait, give me the name. I'm so I'm so, um, uh, uh, confusing it with the Salam T. But there is another region uh, over there also uh, that where there are uh, uh, Fanos, uh, where there are Fanos uh, over there. So, in a way, almost half of the of the uh, Western Tigray also uh, there are no Fanos anymore over there. And the few fanos that are existing are mostly in Walkait uh, and in those areas. And those fanos are ready to compromise with, uh, uh, with Tigray, uh, precisely because they know now uh, they have been cut off uh, from the main, uh, the, from the huge fano army inside Amharas. And since they are local people, they, I'm sure they would be willing to uh, get disarmed and somehow some kind of uh, uh, reconciliation could be done in between those uh, and the uh, local people, the other, the, the, the Tigrayans that are still there, and then, of course, the displaced people that are going to be returned, you know. So some kind of coercion, uh, uh, I mean, an active coercion from the side of Tigray is needed. Uh, passively saying simply, uh, let them uh, first uh, uh, pacify it and then let them hand the as uh, yeah, uh, hand us over the, uh, the lands. I don't think that that part is the one part that I don't like because uh, it seems as if uh, they, they are not giving agency to what they are doing. You know, they have to gain their agency and they should coercively push towards uh, resettlement of the, of the displaced people. And uh, if needed, they should be accompanied by uh, TDF. I don't think... Uh, the Abi government now can afford another confrontation with Tigray at this point in time. And I'm sure it could be, it would even help them, I believe, the Ethiopians, because they could say, okay, we're trying to do this, but they forced themselves in, you know? They could say that even, you know, as an excuse, huh? uh, but it should be done. Uh, that thing should be, it shouldn't wait uh, months from now or anything like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I think um, uh, one, one, possible explanation as to why the Tigray government is not pushing firm, taking control uh, of, of Western Tigray, at least the, the area that you mentioned, could be because they are waiting for the green light from Abiy and from the AUs, I think it's called the verification team. And of course, because Abiy, like you said, is um, making his own calculations and he has his um, timing, he's never going to send that, that um, go ahead um, signal. But because I think the Tigray government is trying to go to extra length to avoid being called uh, provocative or warmonger, because you know they have been they were roundly criticised for um, for starting the war in in twenty twenty. Mm -hmm. Although you know the comp the story is more mm -hmm. complex, and if anything, um, they they were very very slow to to react to developments to the um, war pact between Isaias and Eritrea, but because you know the international community is is generally mm -hmm. loath to to details and to nuance, 
um, everybody was happy to criticize the TPLF for, 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 um, for having started the war. The so war, yeah. they are trying to avoid uh, being called, um, okay. you know, I know, I know, provocative <laughs> or trying to take land aggressively and stuff. So I think that is one of the reasons why they are so reticent and so apprehensive about yeah. pushing for... Um, for taking control of the thing that you, you mentioned, but maybe they, they could have other reasons. And, you know, the people in the Tigray government generally, um, they have a reputation for being nice and a time, and that is putting it positively. A negative way of putting that would be a bit um, naive. Um, I don't know if you would um, share mm -hmm. in that assessment. Um, yeah, well, it has. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah. To, to yeah to to close the the loop um, on the Amhara conflict, um, Yosef. Uh, so a state of emergency had been declared, and today actually it was ratified. I don't know if that is the word by the by the mm -hmm. what, rubber stamp um, parliament. Mm -hmm. um, and there is uh, there has been some sort of skirmishes, and apparently there was some drone strike. I think I believe I think it's been very reported mm -hmm. by third party uh, mm -hmm. outlets including the BBC so there is no denying that there was a drone strike that I mm -hmm. think um, killed even civilians so mm -hmm. some of the things that 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 happened but how do you think the whole thing will pan out in your assessment ah uh, well <laughs> Uh, I mean, uh, yours is as good as mine, I believe, because, uh, uh, or anybody's, uh, you know, because uh, we don't exactly know uh, how this, we, we have seen that the uh, Fanos are not an organized uh, uh, guerrilla uh, army. Uh, that has been probably one of their weaknesses. Uh, one of their big weaknesses is that they have been, uh, uh, the way uh, Abby needed them was to be an appendix, uh, uh, to the uh, to the uh, to, uh, to the federal army in general, you know, uh, the Liu Hail was a much more organized one uh, that has been dismantled, uh, uh, but this one has never been an organized uh, uh, army, and hence it will take them time. Uh, but I do believe, you know, uh, that uh, conducting guerrilla warfare in this area is not uh, it's not a difficult thing. Uh, you know the uh, OLA has been lingering in Oromia for how long? You know, it has not been a very effective uh, guerrilla organization, by the way, given uh, the huge land that they could, uh, uh, they have been uh, trespassing uh, uh, and the number of uh, uh, guerrilla uh, uh, fighters that they have, you know, uh, uh, they have, been, I don't think the OLA has been very effective yet. Uh, it has been almost impossible uh, for the government to, uh, finally bring uh, bring that movement to an end for obvious reasons, you know? And I do believe uh, that this, uh, the, 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 the Amhara resistance will linger, although at a, at a lower level, will linger uh, 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 longer than many people are anticipating right now. It will somehow, I mean, there are many forests, especially on the border areas between, uh, uh, on the Sudanese border area, you know. Uh, that would be, of course, they have uh, been shooting themselves at their feet precisely because they have been antagonizing uh, the, the Sudanese huh? uh, with their claim, uh, with their, uh, that, that expansionist agenda that has been always been working against them, you know. Huh? Uh, that has been bad. Believe me, uh, nations like uh, Sudan and uh, uh, Egypt are very pragmatic ones. You know, if they see uh, uh, an uprising in, as, in Amhara would help uh, uh, whatever it is that they want from Ethiopia in general, especially on the Nile issue, you know, they would support them. Uh, they would support them. It's so only now uh, the fact that uh, the civil war in Sudan has somewhat, you know, disadvantaged them in that way. But when if Egyptians look at it, you know, uh, the way uh, they are even, it's, it's even, they are even better positioned than Tigray hmm? uh, to uh, uh, to work against the Ethiopian government because uh, the Nile, for example, is uh, uh, basically uh, a few miles from Gujam. Huh? Uh, so. Uh, that that area, you know, the Benishangul area is almost, uh, uh, I mean, the Amharas have always been, uh, uh, have access in that area. So, in a sense, uh, 
a guerrilla warfare by by the Amharas could linger for a while, for, for a while, you know, to cause uh, much consternation inside 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 Ethiopia. So I don't think that it will simply come uh, to an end the, the way the people are talking about it right now. It will linger uh, uh, probably at a lower uh, level, uh, and uh, uh, especially I uh, you know. Uh, uh, given Abi Abi's way of uh, uh, dealing with such uh, uh, movements, with such resistance, you know, he has never uh, uh, brought a resistance to an end through a peaceful agreement. The only one has been uh, the Tigray one, and that happened after a million, more than a million people have died. Huh? And I don't think we'll stop either here in, 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 uh, when it comes in terms of the uh, Amhara regime. Huh? I'm sorry, the Amhara uh, resistance. Huh? So my hope is, my hope, uh, my hope is that somehow uh, if the Amhara elite come to their sense, you know, huh? they could forge an alliance. If they are to forge an alliance, they have to forge an alliance with uh, Tigray. Huh? And at the same time with Oromia. Huh? And then uh, they will have to make their case clear. Huh? That would probably bring a, a, a lasting peace uh, in Ethiopia. But I'm not sure, you know. Huh? Uh, it has been, uh, I, I talked about the Amhara elite before. Huh? Here is an example that I gave to, uh, to, to some people, you know, uh, some Amhara elite, two or three of them uh, that I have met in a different place, you know. Think about a jar, a jar that is, uh, uh, let's say, positioned on the roof of a house. That jar, uh, it doesn't matter whether it's empty or half full or full with water, huh? uh, uh, until it overflows. It's essence in, in its overflow because the time it overflows, uh, it drips down, let's say, to the, uh, to the ground. And let's say the animals over there drink uh, the birds, whatever it is, uh, drink from that, from that, from whatever is dripping from that. So it doesn't matter. You see, so there is no difference whether it's empty or half full or even full until it overflows. So to me, when I look at the Amhara elite, all of them, huh, the best of them are the jar is full. If they stop over there. So in a way, uh, they are no better than the ones that have uh, that are filled up with half of that or empty ones. You know, huh? it, when it looks at in, in its consequential terms, huh? it's they are almost. I mean, they have they will have no effect at all on the uh, on the general problem that you have been talking about until they overflow. And what do I mean with the overflow? They have to cross a certain uh, that they haven't crossed before. And that is, for example, when it comes to Tigray, the one that I have told you, none of them has come out. And it's you know, almost unanimous. None of them has come out to say, OK, uh, the problem uh, uh, of Tigray, you know, we understand. Uh, we accept, for example, that uh, the Amharas uh, with Eritrea and with the, uh, with the government have uh, conducted the acknowledgement that they have conducted genocide in Tigray, mm -hmm. instead of equating it with some kind of crimes that have been, uh, uh, you know, in, in, in Amhara, they have to come clear on that one. And then they have also to come clear on the, uh, on the land issue. Huh? Uh, they have to say that this is, for bad or worse, you know, this is, this has been, there could be some controversies, you know, I know the uh, about the area of, for example, of Western Tigray. You know, there has been statistics. Almost 90% of those were Tigrinian speaking people. There could have been some issues at the periphery, at the periphery on Salamte and Sagale. Yeah? Uh, there could be some uh, ambiguities over there, but it is on both sides. Uh, there are bilingual uh, people uh, living on that side. Still, you know, given the genocide that has taken Tigray, yeah? The question is, do you reward genocide by uh, uh, redrawing the map of the country? You know, think about uh, uh, Germany, for example. In Germany, 
uh, Germany lost, I think, about 13% of its land after Second World War. And Germany has never asked, never asked for its, you know, for its lost territory. The reason is purely because it has committed so a huge amount, I mean, a huge genocide, not only on the Jews, but on the Eastern part of, uh, uh, of Europe, you know. So I don't mean that, you know, a huge chunk of uh, uh, Amhara's, uh, Amhara land has to be given to Tigray as a result of genocide, or a huge part of Tigray, Eritrean land has to be given to, uh, to uh, Tigray because of this genocide. What I am saying is that the land that it has been before Tigray should never be put a question again, precisely because one of the reasons because of this, because it would be rewarding uh, genocide, you know. Not only are they, uh, no, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, denying that they have committed genocide, but they are also trying to reward the genocide by uh, changing the map of the of Tigray. So once they make clear, if there are a few of them, a few of them, I, I'm talking about on the top, you know, political leaders, political elites, uh, known politically, a few of them who would come clear and say this. It would be a huge, huge uh, 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 possibilities that are open now. That's what scares Abi. He knows that uh, uh, a peaceful agreement between Amhara, for example, and Tigray uh, would probably uh, uh, bring his uh, uh, government to an end. The same thing is true with uh, with Oromia. You know, whatever grievances that they have, you know. One has to settle it that way, and that's the only way. The problem that now is that Abi has constructed in such a way that it's almost impossible to think, for example, about uh, uh, Eritrean and uh, 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 Tigrayan rapprochement because of the uh, of the extent of brutality that the Eritrean government has committed uh, in Tigray. The same thing is with Amharas, you know. But the problem is that. Almost the entire Habesha world, you know, the Amhara, the Tigray, and the Eritreans have found themselves now in a bind because they have been effectively isolated from one another and neutralized. So that is the whole point. And how do you change that? Of course, that's the question that we'll have, uh -huh, that we'll have to work. Uh -huh. Well, well uh, Yosef, interesting that you mentioned the Tigray and Eritrean rapprochement, as I told you offline. I was thinking that we would talk about that as a second part of this interview, but I, I think that's just too big a topic to to fit in into whatever um, yeah. remaining time we have. So we're going to push that to another time. Uh, yeah. I'm sure that you're going to be generous enough to 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 give us um, another time, maybe uh, I don't know uh, in in a couple of weeks. Uh, but in terms of the Amhara elites, um, I can only wish that they would heed to, you know, the wonderful words of um, wisdom and advice that you just offered up. Um, but I do I think that they would listen to advice and suggestions from people who are deeply informed about what's happening, like such as you. I am not optimistic. Um, and there's something that is fundamentally wrong and fundamentally broken about the way the Amhara elites have been comporting themselves. So, for instance, there was almost a unanimous support for Abi during the Tigray War, as you know, Yosef. There was, there wasn't, there wasn't any, there wasn't any opposition when he used drones to to kill civilians, even in in IDP centers um, of all places. There wasn't any opposition when he used starvation against children. There wasn't any any beep when he used. Um, all sorts of extremely medieval cruelty, like like um, siege on, on on children, and now all of a sudden, although they didn't support that, now they are saying that using drones, for instance, is beyond the pale, and the fact that Abiy has used drones in Amhara makes him irredeemable. That's what they are saying now, which is true. I completely agree with them, but they should have shown some sort of opposition to. Um, Abi, when he was doing the exact same thing, but at a more massive scale in, in, in Tigray. Mm -hmm. and, and interestingly, I was listening to an interview with um, Andergachos again a couple of hours ago. Now, I'm not 
claiming that under Gacha is a representative of the Amhara elites, but it's a very important voice, as you, as you know. He has a massive following in the, in the Amhara. And he has just fled the country, saying that the regime has taken a, the wrong turn and that there is no way he could uh, remain in Ethiopia, also because he's threatened for, for, for his life. So he has fled. I don't know whether he has fled to Eritrea or, or to London. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I lost you for a while, for a second. Uh -huh. uh, how uh, okay. he planned to be of use to the struggle, some elements of the of the funnel and continue to train and to, to wreak havoc, havoc in Ethiopia? Is that something that I think you briefly mentioned also Egypt? Do you see... Um, Egypt and Eritrea and other countries hostile to Ethiopia um, joining hands in harboring some some military group, groups like Fano in their countries and and unleashing them when and if um, convenient. Is that something that you think might become a a thing? Well, uh, I think uh, I briefly touched it uh, when I said uh, you know that uh, uh, the Amharas. Huh? Uh, for, for Tigray, you know, uh, there is no way to uh, access, uh, the, it, 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 there is no way to access it, uh, the, uh, the Sudanese uh, resources huh? uh, unless uh, uh, it gets back uh, Western Tigray. But for the Amharas, you know, uh, all the way, uh, the entire uh, uh, Gondor uh, uh, area uh, is, uh, uh, all of it is uh, on, the, on, the, on the Western part of uh, Ethiopia. Huh? Uh, it borders. It's a huge. I mean, it's a long border uh, with uh, uh, with uh, Sudan. You know, the only thing that is probably, as I said before, the only problem with that is that now uh, uh, Sudan finds itself in a civil war, and it's very difficult for uh, the Egyptians or the Sudanese to arm uh, anybody at this point in time. So that would be an advantage for Abi, uh, at least for for a moment. But at the same time. There is also some kind of anarchy in that area, which means that uh, the uh, the Ethiopian, uh, I mean the Amhara, uh, Fanos, or any uh, kind of other resistance would come in and out easily uh, from uh, Ethiopia. I mean from the Amhara land. Now uh, there is another problem. Uh, the Amharas have been antagonizing the Kamant, uh, and the Kamant are uh, well positioned. Eh? Uh, along the borders so with uh, Sudan, that could also be a disadvantage to the Amharas. Another thing is that uh, the, the federal forces have quickly uh, occupied uh, many uh, 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 positional areas uh, along the border uh, to prevent uh, that from happening. I doubt uh, that, uh, I don't think it will work eventually because uh, in that area, it's not as simple as the Western Tigray. Western Tigray is uh, uh, more or less a flat land, huh? and you could easily uh, prevent people from crossing that area if you control the border area. But uh, from Kwara all the way to uh, uh, the, uh, the Sageli area, uh, the land is not, you know, it's uh, uh, most of it is uh, almost the highland touching the, at the borders of uh, uh, Sudan. So it's not easy to uh, monitor it. So that also would work uh, uh, positively for the uh, Amhara resistance. But eventually, it is how they could... Uh, the, the, I, I feel that uh, the Egyptians would listen more to the Amharas than the Tigrayans, because the Tigrayans have already been weakened, and at the same time, uh, even if they uh, touch... Uh, uh, even if they uh, get back to the western part of Sudan, uh, they would probably be in a better position. Uh, the Tigrayans would be in a better position to agree with the Ethiopian government. So, more or less, they would focus on the Amhara. So, there is this potential that Egypt could use uh, to destabilize Ethiopia. Because imagine, there is 30, 40 million people inside Amhara. It's a huge force. Huh? Uh, and that destabilization could also uh, uh, be... Uh, harnessed inside Ethiopia because the Amharas uh, are to found all over Ethiopia. There are more than 10 million of them uh, throughout Ethiopia. That's also another factor. And then there is also a big another factor is that 
some of the uh, uh, remember that the war uh, of uh, Ethiopia against uh, uh, the Ethiopian government against Tigray had been uh, the denial of services has been its most potent weapon. Uh, it denied electricity, internet, telephone, cash, banking system, and so on and so forth. That has been one of the main things, and then the denial of food aid, uh, the medicine, you know, all that has been very effective. In fact, more people have died in Tigray uh, through lack of medicine and starvation than through, war, uh, through the war itself, directly through the war itself. So, uh, at the same time, I'm sure uh, to some extent he, he will start using that weapon against the Amharas, one of them being the denial of fertilizers, for example, that would be very effective in uh, causing much of havoc in, inside of the Amhara uh, region. But I believe the Amharas also have a weapon in their hands because theirs is a huge uh, region. Huh? Uh, one of the things that I have been uh, talking about before was that uh, the, the fact that Tigray and other regions are like the Ola have never uh, uh, realized uh, that they have a great weapon in their hands. That is to use exactly the same uh, method against the Ethiopian government. Think of, for example, the, uh, uh, the power uh, the power system in Ethiopia. The power system in Ethiopia is mostly mostly comes from the uh, hydropower, from hydropower, from hydro plants, uh, from dams. You know, uh, one of them is of course the now uh, the Renaissance dam, but also uh, the other dams, the Gide, for example. There are three Gide, uh, big dams in the southern part of Ethiopia. Uh, much of the electricity in Ethiopia comes from that area. In fact, much of the electricity uh, in Ethiopia, almost 90% of it comes from the western part of Ethiopia, western and southwestern part of Ethiopia, where there is too much water over there, uh, where there are big rivers uh, there. So, for Ola, for example, I have always wondered, why, what does it, uh, I mean, why don't they use the power of disrupting? Uh, disrupting this, uh, this this lines, you know, uh, this uh, uh, this big poles, electric poles that run all over Ethiopia, thousands of uh, uh, kilometers, you know. Why is it never occurs to, the, occurs to them that they could easily cut it off at, at many different areas and cause havoc inside Ethiopia, for example? That part of it, probably the Amhara, the Amhara resistance could use it especially when it comes to uh, the new Renaissance Islam, it passes uh, through their land. Huh? So uh, there is that potential, which would be very frightening for Ethiopia because uh, if, it da if you make Addis yeah, Ababa dark, it's over. Uh, the whole thing is over. So the fact that the Ethiopian government has been using effectively against Tigray huh? and uh, against the other resistance, but the fact that the re those resistance movements have never uh, uh, used that same formula against the government is, is rather amazing, especially on those areas uh, where these uh, 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 hydro plants are. Uh, uh, example, Ola. Ola is in that uh, in that area. All that it needs is cutting off here and there. You know, I mean, of course, uh, the government would come and repair it, but it's thousands of kilometers. It could never uh, be able to. Uh, control the system for various reasons. Either it hasn't occurred to them, or they are afraid their constituency also, you know, uh, would be mad at them. So anyway, uh, there is this potency, a great uh, potency way of using the Egyptians against, uh, because this would be a heaven sent for the Egyptians uh, to use the Amharas against the uh, central government. So. I hope, you know, everything comes, <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, he would come to his senses, but I doubt uh, that he would come to his senses, at least if they could force him uh, to sit down uh, uh, and come up with, uh, as they, as they uh, keep saying, you know, uh, they keep saying, Hulum uh, uh, Mangust, uh, uh, that kind of thing, you know, uh, if they could come up, you know, but they, they could only come up with the Amhara elite have to realize that they should start rapprochement uh, with Tigray and Oromia if they want to, to have, uh, I mean, uh, 
هولم اكف منجس they really want to bring that into realization then uh, they have to come up with a rapprochement uh, a genuine rapprochement instead of uh, uh, i mean uh, you, you have heard all of it i mean i have heard all of the uh, the best of the amhara elite huh? and they never touch the root of the matter they simply come uh, to you know say the right words you know but then when it comes to the uh, to the source of the problems they never deal with it and nobody is accepting that is going to accept that you know but they could have done it you know i'm always wondering why you, you cannot have it both ways you cannot have western Tigray and uh, southern Tigray and then at the same time preach uh, that you are with the people of Tigray or that you uh, that you want to uh, bring uh, a change in Addis Ababa. Uh, it has to be done uh, holistically and they have to realize that. I hope they, I hope they do, but without that, I don't think there is any hope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think listening to what you're saying, um, uh, from the OLA, uh, what they could do to to funnel to the um, foreign mm -hmm. country that might uh, be interested in in, in in meddling in at some point in time, um, it's going to be one hell of a ride, and not in its positive sense. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, so that would that from my side, uh, Yusuf. Thank you for um, helping us making sense of the very very complex dynamic um of uh, what is happening in amhara the place what the incentives are um, what the arrangement is what the dynamic is how it could unfold uh, what the cause um i think it was very educational and i'm absolutely sure that a lot of people especially those uh, uh people who who try to understand Ethiopia, but they don't really have resources to um, to read up on, for instance, to try mm -hmm. to understand what is happening in, in Amhara. So it would be a wonderful resource. And um, thank you for, for, for that, um, Yosef. Now, we, I mean, we barely um, mm -hmm. touched the, 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 the surface. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of things that we could have I gone know, into, know, into detail, know. like mm -hmm. whether or not um, a possible alliance between FANO and OLA is um, a conceivable thing. Um, we didn't talk about that, how the OLA might be reading the situation. We didn't go into that. Mm -hmm. um, and we could have gone into a lot of aspects of how the Tigray government is operating and other aspects. But I think we have given the basic pointers to people who might be interested mm -hmm. in going into, into yeah. details. Mm -hmm. So um, thank you very much. Uh, if there is something that you would like to give us as a, as a, as a um, by way of concluding remark, um, I would love to, to give you an opportunity and to uh, for you to, to wrap up. Uh, and um, yeah, just um, yeah, well, uh, give us what you, what you know, think is the most uh, important uh, thing to highlight well, or, or uh, emphasize maybe. Yeah, yeah. Well, I hope, you know, I hope uh, uh, there uh, would be some kind of peace throughout the region. If you have, if you have uh, noticed it, you know, uh, you have seen that... Uh, we are having failed states in throughout the uh, Horn of Africa. Somalia is Somalia. You have seen it disintegrate. Huh? Uh, Ethiopia seems to be uh, more or less a failed state without uh, uh, the official breaking up of uh, Ethiopia, but it's on its way. Huh? Uh, Eritrea uh, might seem uh, a stable nation from outside. Huh? Uh, but it is an, an entirely hollowed out nation. Uh, it is, I mean, uh, it has been almost disappearing as, as a nation uh, precisely because uh, the population, you know, the population base of Eritrea uh, has remained at around 2 million people, huh? uh, which means that uh, almost every uh, adult, uh, you know, when they reach uh, 20, 23, 24 years, they just leave the nation. More than a million people have uh, have escaped uh, Eritrea. So Eritrea, practically, uh, uh, now uh, Eritrea is uh, finds itself in, at a very difficult uh, uh, situation. Huh? Uh, the entire Eritrean border is uh, is being turned in trenches. If you remember, huh? uh, the trenches of Eritrea were from around the Sherraro area, you know, the Bademe Sherraro area, all the way to uh, 
Zalambesa, uh, that area, the Europe area, that's where the trenches have been, hundreds of kilometers of trenches have been there. But now, uh, with, uh, uh, with the federal forces taking control of uh, uh, Western Tigray, the entire Tekeze River is also being turned in trenches. I've heard that a lot of Eritrean uh, soldiers are now accumulating in that uh, in that area up to Omn Hajar uh, to the border of Sudan. And now, if and when uh, Abi decides also <laughs> to go for Aseb, it means that the Eritrean uh, trench will go all the way to uh, the Danakil area, a very inhospitable area, which means that literally Eritrea has been turned into a, tre a trench state. That's where hundreds of thousands of people are now living in the trenches. And that has been very difficult for the people. Eh? And that's why almost everybody wants to leave, uh, to leave the nation. So what I'm saying is that Eritrea also has turned to be a failed state. Now add to that the Sudanese problem, where Sudan is turning also into another failed state. So we have more or less the entire Horn of Africa made up of, of failed states. We have to come out of this somehow or else, especially in the 21st century. Imagine, you know, where uh, uh, the technology, where the technology is getting, you know, uh, it's almost uh, impossible to think where it is heading, the, whole, the entire Horn of Africa, where it is heading in the 21st century. So I hope uh, a formula will be found where all of these nations could, peace in li uh, could live in peace. Huh? Uh, so, well, that's all I have to say for today. <laughs> let's, say, let's put it well, that yeah, way. Yeah, uh, uh, speaking uh, of failed um, states, I, I remember reading recently that Eritrea, uh, Isaias had um, apparently, uh, very, very recently said that we are the only country standing in the Horn of Africa. <laughs> Our neighbors are falling uh, apart. And uh, um, I mean, who is to say that he doesn't have a point? Mm -hmm. I think he has a point in that in that um, respect. But of course, you categorize Eritrea too in the in the um, um, in the elite states of failed states in the elite yeah, yeah. Uh, group of failed states. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, so, like I said, we're going to arrange another um, interview um, to talk <laughs> exclusively about Eritrea um, uh, Tigray or uh, This uh, thought came to me because I was really inspired by the demonstrations of um, some Eritreans in the diaspora. I think that's a wonderful thing. Uh, and it was a joint effort in a way. A lot of Tigrans also joined in. Also Eritreans have been advocating for, for Tigray. A lot of Eritreans and that has, you know, it, it, it occurred to me that we, we, especially people like you who do the deep thinking, who do the um, strategizing and um, uh, and the, you know, charting out of, of uh, pathways and stuff. Um, I think it would be good if we, if we had a discussion about that. What is it that, how, like, what, how should the, the struggle, the advocacy and everything be organized? So we're going to have that sort of uh, discussion but uh, for today, uh, thank you mm -hmm. so much, um, Yusuf. I thank thoroughly you. enjoyed it. Thank you so much, very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Taglai. And uh, uh, I would uh, gladly return. Huh? Uh, so we will uh, we'll discuss uh, uh, the Eritrean problem as vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, huh? uh, what's going on in uh, Ethiopia, Tigray, Amhara, and all of that. Yeah. Uh -huh. <gasps> and thank you that. very much indeed. And um, to our listeners, thank you for um, staying with us. Um, I think you would agree with me that um, Yosef is a deeply informed, a very enlightening commentator, and I'm sure that it was worth um, your time. I'm sure that you have got a lot of insights into what is happening in Ethiopia, uh, and I'm sure that you'll be looking forward to our next um, next uh, discussion. And if you like what we are doing, um, as I always say, don't forget to like, to subscribe, to share the content with you with the friends in, in a circle uh, the more people get to listen to to yosef i think the the, the better for, for for everyone of us so don't forget to do that but um until we see you next time bye bye